All right, everybody, welcome back to Dragon Age Inquisition. That's right. I was really happy, though, today that my, uh, Bloodborne worked. I don't know what was going on today. Been a jerk. Like a big one. Oh, you know. It, uh, oh. That explains why my headphones have been so quiet. My volume was all the way down. Like, pretty much. I was like, why is the game so quiet? Are my headphones being stupid? Nope. Just me being stupid. Anyway. Go ahead and jump back here. Bloodborne work today, so I hope you guys And I put up some of the little bits from the broken video um, that I thought were the most important. Uh, one made oh, right, yep. Yep, this is a horror game. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so how you guys doing? Are you excited? Here's Eve. Fixing to slip right into that new year in a, in a few hours. I'm excited. Pretty cool. Pretty sure that 2019 is gonna be just 2018. There are a lot of people that are like, ugh, 2018 was so bad. It's only as bad as you make it to be. I mean, honestly. You know, if you approach your life with, you know, um, love and um, kindness and positivity, you know, and if you just like tell yourself, you know what? I've had my bad moments, but there are so many more good moments than there are bad. I mean, you can do it. Just gotta keep pushing forward. <clears throat> Alright. House... Um... Lauderus. That's quite the name. Uh... A quiet message arrived from House Maldoris today. Considering the speed of this response, it seems hard to believe the family had no knowledge of what Dorian found in the book. I wonder how long they've sat upon the secret, wondering if it might someday come to light. Mm. My dear Inquisitor, we are most appreciative of the information you provided. How scandalous to think there might be any connection between our house and legend. It's not true, of course, and to reassure you on that point, I intend to dedicate my family toward helping the Inquisition in its righteous struggle. Yours in faith, Magister Arian of House Lauderus. Oh, he's like, I did, I, what? We were, huh? <laughs> To whom it concerns, we, the Council of Heralds, declare the Yilin base in the holdings of the Inquisition. So yeah, I did this one. Uh, I think I just... I tend to let Josephine handle certain things. Let's see. Uh, Commander Cullen, our troops fortified the city of Wycombe and flew the Inquisition banner. It is good that we did so, as the marchers had soldiers ready to invade the city and kill every elf inside. What? I let Cullen take on. Not ready to make an enemy of the Inquisition, however, and when they start they pulled up short. The Inquisition diplomat, Lady Guinevere Volant, handled negotiations quite well. When presented with evidence of the Red Lyrium, which we made clear was an unholy tool of Corypheus himself, the marchers backed down from their claims of a baseless Elven rebellion and pledged to leave Wycombe in peace. They have also donated generously to the Inquisition's coffers to make clear their support for our cause. <clears throat> the Inquisitor keep the Inquisitor's keeper is Demi Thoriel. Oh yeah, I was calling that person Thoriel because their name was uh, really hard. Has been installed along with a city elf and several human merchants on the new Wycombe City Council, which will rule the city fairly for both humans and elves alike. Lieutenant Rosaline Chambre... Ch Chambre... Ter oh, everyone's names are so weird. Oh, I'm glad I let Cullen handle it that time because last time my entire clan was wiped out. <laughs> Cullen, you magnificent bastard. Alright. Okay, Cullen. Uh, so I let him handle a lot of the soldier stuff, just because he's a soldier, so he knows better about stuff like that than I do. Um, I'm 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 just, I'm just from. <laughs> uh, I have the downward pointing triangular symbols from our outpost. Okay. Um. Yep. Yeah. Meliana? see what we have. Truth or dare. Consequences of Blackwell's lies. Alliances with angered eyes. What is this one? Oh, that's right. I was gonna let... I was gonna let her handle it. Because it's less bloodshed that way. So, handle this one. 
just because I feel like she's better suited to stuff like this than Cullen, who is like, just drag him back home. Like, <laughs> his response to everything is to just have someone put their hands on it as hard as possible and make it happen. You see, I will punch that bridge into existence. It's like, Cullen, I know you will, but you need to just kind of take a breath. <laughs> I love Cullen, though, just because he just hit people. And it'll get done, and it's like, true, true, that's true. Uh, but you can't just go around hitting everyone, <laughs> you know, every time someone's like, Ah, oh, the Inquisition! <laughs> he disagrees, of course. Be it for me. My dear, I know you must have a great deal on your mind right now, but I need to speak with you. Okay. You know as well as I how far the Inquisition's influence has spread. Yes. And how desperate the Grand Clerics have become. Mm -hmm. Our opinion will be instrumental in their election of the new divine. I thought that might be coming after the Grand Ball. The Inquisition may not be invited to their vote, but our actions will certainly influence the Grand Ball. Oh, I've already Ball. sent stuff out for to Cassandra. Sit on the sunburst throne, a candidate should have grace, charm, and a will of solid steel. Cassandra may lack the first two, but unless you can think of someone better, she is the strongest choice. I think Cassandra would be best for the job. Cassandra is our only hope of restoring order after all this. Mm -hmm. I knew you would see it as I do. We will have to be very mindful of everything we do and say, for the Conclave certainly is doing the same. If they look to the Inquisition to provide a sign of the Maker's will, we will have to give them the right one. Yeah, I pick Cassandra. I picked her because she is the one who is most likely to instill change. It seemed like Justinia was the same way. She loved everyone, you know? Like, she didn't look and see, oh, that person's an elf, and disregard them. She saw a living, breathing being. Same with humans, same with mages and Templars and stuff, you know? She was like a, a catalyst for change, and I think Cassandra is like the same way. She's willing to change, and she's willing to admit when she's wrong, so she can change, and that's why I picked Cassandra for the new divine. Inquisitor. What can I do for you, darling? Nothing. I just wanted to check in on you after everything that happened. So yeah, um, Cassandra's always my choice, just because I think she's the best fit. Like, like Vivian said, she might not have, she might not be the most charming, and she might not have the most grace, but she has an iron will that um, cannot be, like you know. You know, she will, she will mess you up. I mean, like, like her as a divine is one of the things where you're just like, this is, this is perfect because she will stab the shit out of you if she has to. I trust all as well. I like, I just love that idea of her in the divine like outfit, and then like she just whips out a sword from like inside her robes, and they're like, oh shit, <laughs> not having any of it today, is she? Like, no, not today. All right, let's see what we got going on. Um, oh yeah, I put up some. I'm putting up some little tidbits of uh, they're like just just little like clips that I found um, interesting in Dragon Age because after we or after I stopped recording um, on Friday, like I found I ran into like a a. Dalish clan of elves in the middle of the Emerald Graves, and I was like, oh shit, I'm not recording. So I just decided to, like, record that. And then also, uh, talking to Cole about how it feels to be human, I thought was kind of important. Uh, God, we gotta, I gotta go and <laughs> finish. I can't do by the grace of the Dalish because I fucked up. Good on me, right? Oh! Oh, let's go back to the... Let's, let's go... Let's go to the oasis. Why not? Um... No! Touch me. Nope. Again. I want the tent. There we go. Alright, let's take you, Cassandra. Oh, and Solus. Since this place bears your name. So... I want to know, and 
I'm sure I could look it up, but it's like was Solasan named after him? His name means pride. You know, for one. And this whole place. And I was stupid when I was playing. I was like, oh, Solas is funny. And then like it says like something like the Hall of Pride, and I'm like, huh. And then like later I was like, wait, that's right. His his name means pride. Um. Which is totally, like, it fits him so well, that name. Because he is very prideful. Which I think is how I'm going to kick his ass, if I'm being honest. Um, he doesn't even know what he's up against. The requisition officer has something for me, as usual. I'm just ignore her and... Unlock the door. I will. <laughs> All right, let's find the hole. There it is. There's probably spiders in here. I mean, probably. There's usually spiders. These stop. Why are you breathing? Ah, I knew it. Yarg. <laughs> yeah, my new staff is badass. Oh, it's strong as hell. I kind of feel like I should have brought coal, but whoop, it's all right. I mean, I could always teleport back, like, instantaneously if I wanted to. I keep bringing he'll survival or something else, because it's interesting, you know, with- Oh, it's a little nugget. Um, you know, with who he is and stuff. Every time I get a chance to take him somewhere that's kind of magical, I, I try to take him. I did! I went the wrong way! I went up in the other direction, so I totally, like, fucking missed my turn. We took a wrong turn in Albuquerque. Maybe I can get down. The wrong way. Good on me! Haven't you noticed? Every time. You know what I did? I think I took the wrong tunnel. Hold on. I think that's what happened. Cause there's- yeah, I took the wrong tunnel. I totally did. Alright. Back we go. Hello. Don't mind us, me. Just I'm just being- you know, I'm just dumb. There's another tunnel down here that you- that one- yeah, I just, I'm just, I went the wrong way because I have no brain. I think that's the one I was looking for because that's on the tunnel. I think the couple that lead up to the top, right? No. Don't mind me, guys. I know I'm leading you guys in circles. You're like, God damn it, Inquisitor. Make up your mind. I can't. You know me. Long enough to know that the fact that I am, um,. Here it is. I, that, 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 I just can't. I just can't make up my mind. You shouldn't go in here. It's dangerous. When I ran into that spider, there was a ladder. Like, right there that I was going the wrong way. <laughs> I was like, this isn't the way. That one goes way anyway. Yay! Cullen, he did this super aggressive. Actually, just had him hanging out with a bunch of uh, soldiers, so... That's like their job, is to go beat the shit out of things. We were trying to form like a, a union between the Inquisition soldiers and I think the Imperial, Imperial Army or something. This is where I wanted to go. There we go, there's Solasan. Intrinsic fool. I've never opened all of these, so I'm super curious as to what's behind the big door. Because I've never been on the other side of that door before. I think I gave up, like, partway through. I was like, I don't wanna. Yeah, this thing is open. Why would I open the fire door when I still have this? Have I- oh, did I already go through this all the way? Oh, whoa, oh, whoa, whoa, I did. Okay, <laughs> listen guys, we're not even- there's some fire traps just hanging undead, just hanging out. <laughs> That's, yep, they can have it. They can have the- they can have the room, I don't need it. Alright, let's go on in. 
Yeah, I've never opened all these and then opened the door, so I have no idea what's behind the big door. So it's gonna be a surprise for me and you. I mean, that's cool, right? It's fun. We all like surprises. Especially in games where uh, our friends stab us in the in the fields. Electricity! Aww. Give me that power. Thanks. Ooh, fire resistance. That's what we all need. Good old fashioned fire resistance. Some of the stuff I just don't care about. It's just kind of here. Loot that I don't really need. I mean, I can take it back and sell it. And I mean, it's still gonna. It's still gonna be here, so I'm not really worried about collecting it. Uh, like the stuff from the boxes and shit. So I'm just gonna collect all the money. What? Well, I don't have enough shards. You tease. Okay. That's fine. We can find shards. It won't be that hard. I'm just really excited about opening all these. I'm trying to do some of these side quests while I still have Solus in my team. Or, or whatever, because, um... You know, later he just kind of, like, Fs off. And you don't see him again until Trespasser. Unfortunately, I don't have the Jaws of Harkon DLC. Uh, because I do know that there are, uh, well, there is a kind of, well, there's, there's stuff about Fenharal that you kind of, like, bump into, um, while you're doing that DLC, where you get to learn a little bit more about the Dread Wolf and stuff like that, and you get some of, I think you get more of Solus's like, sauce. Eh. And the Dread Wolf. Eh. Um... And you really feel bad for him. I know a lot of people will be like, I don't. Well, I do. I mean, I understand if, like, it, it pisses you off what he's doing. It makes me mad, too. You know, because he doesn't have to do it that way. But he is anyway. Uh, oh. Well, I'm... Okay. But, you know... You kind of have this understanding of him and why he does the things he's doing and stuff like that. So you can be mad at him, but you also have this understanding. And I think that's important when it comes to, like, getting to know Solus is, is being willing to understand what's going on, like, through his head. Uh, three Draconis. Dido wants to know what it means, didn't we all? But he frets at it. Keep your head low, work like the rest, and shut it out. That's all he needs. He feels it. I know he does. We all see it. Still he pushes. I do not want to talk about it. I do not want to know what it means. Some evil magic best left alone. Is that not answer enough? He thinks it's more. It's in his head and he won't let it go. Nug again for dinner. This day never ends. Dido was on the ledge behind the pool. What was he doing? What does he know? If he disturbs it... Nico won't talk to Dido at all. He trades shifts so that they will not work together. I should do the same. The boss says his boss and Val Furman will be sending someone to check on operations. Suppose it's just routine. Dido speaks strangely now. Too much time at the door. Nug again for dinner. Wonderful. Make her forgive me, but Dido's absence is a weight lift about his wife, though. Great. Great, the demon door. That's, that's what I'm trying to open, is that door good on me, right? I'm smart. How'd the Inquisitor die? Uh, opening magic gold doors? It's like, oh. Woo! I found all the shards of this place. Good on me. Now I need more shards, because I'm clearly insane. Did I get all the ones from the western approach? I might have. Didn't kill all these, though. All the rifts. Which, I'll do that. Looks like it. No! No! What are you, what are you doing, Inquisitor? Did you freaking see a monster? Calm your- t Oh, we're being attacked. What is it? There's nothing. It's just a little fox. Don't be such a wiener. 
Uh, Emerald Graves. Impristuion. Skyhold doesn't have any. Oh, it does have Astrariums, though, all these places. Wait, Crestwood probably has shards. Because it's not, um. And a landmark I missed. Look at that. Surprise. Does it have any of the little skulls just kind of fucking chilling? Oh, there's stuff I missed? Jeez. Get with the program. Valroyo doesn't have shards because it's not cool enough. The Storm Coast does though, and I've missed some. So I need to go. Ooh, and there's a red lyrium deposit. I also need to go to this thing here as well, so we'll we'll go to this camp. Sounds like I just like teleported into the darkness. Like I know like the point of fast travel is to say he totally rode there. But that sounded like I, I entered a portal and was just immediately teleported. Which would be cool, you know, but uh I don't have a portal. I have a magic mirror. It doesn't really say much, but I have one. That was a that was that was a Snow White reference, <laughs> in case you guys were wondering. I wish it said more, like "Watch out, Solus has been her all." You know, it could have warned me. Stupid magic mirror. <laughs> I would love to have like a magic like pocket mirror, you know, like in a compact. Just like carry it around and it just like talks shit the whole time. All right, I want to go up there to that. To the shiny dew. And, uh. Get the shards. And then we'll go collect the shards. And then we'll try to open all those doors because I want to know what's on the other side of it. I am curious. Like, super curious. Alright, says so there's four. Wait, one there. Is it on Dragon Island, or is it just, like, around? By the way, Dragon Island sucks. Just, just so you guys know. I do love that the Inquisitor is super, like, let's just jump on it. Oh, that one's on the ground. Look at that. That one's the... That one's what I... That's the tease shard. That's the one that's, like, super easy to get to, but the rest are, like, an in-your-face, you know, go fuck yourself. It's in those types of locations. Like, oh, thanks. <laughs> Thank you for being so kind and then suddenly taking it all away. I should probably do more of my requisition stuff, but I don't know if it ever ends. I kind of feel like it's going to have, like, the Preston Garvey thing. Where he's like, I got more stuff for you, and it's like, oh. <laughs> thanks. It's like that... It's like a, that present you didn't want, you know? Oh, I, I love this. What is it? <laughs> like that sort of thing. I am grateful for any gifts I receive, but we've all had that moment where there's just one that we kind of uh, come across where we're like, oh, thank you. <laughs> it's just inevitable. It doesn't say anything about the person giving the gift. It's just like, it's a weird, like, it's just a thing we've all been through where we're like, Oh god, no, no, I mean, I can't, I don't want to go down. <laughs> I already fucked up, didn't I? Yep, down we go, woo! Oh, it wasn't that bad. I don't know how much health I have to be sliding down mountains and not dying, but... Good for me. <laughs> Shut up, why is stuff growling? Is it because of all the dark spawn that live under, that live under here? You know, we had to close off that area, so... We had to close off a couple of areas, actually, didn't we? This game is quite the journey. Um... And I love that... That I get to go on it with you. Like, with all of you, because you're great. Um... You know, for those who watch the Dragon Age... Episodes, I- Oh, shit! Fuck. <laughs> okay, I'm alright. I'm alright. Uh, but yeah, for those of you who actually watch it, I appreciate it. Oh! What is this? In the mist! A torn sky. 
We set sail from Kirkwall under fair winds and clear skies. The captain said we would be in Rialto within a week, but the weather held. I spent the day aboard deck chatting with the crew and retired to my cabin at dusk. To my dismay, the motion of the waves made it impossible for me to settle down. Even reading was difficult, though the book of myths and legends I had brought was quite riveting indeed. I emerged again several hours later, after it was dark, hoping the chill night air would grant me some relief. As I leaned over the rail, I heard a cry of alarm from the crow's nest. I raised my head and saw, in the sky to the far-off southwest, an eerie green glow, which grew brighter as we watched. In the space of a breath, it became too dazzling to look at, and I had to shield my eyes. When I looked up again, the light was still there amidst swirling clouds. It was then as though the sky had been rent in two, and the heavens were pouring out. I heard footsteps and was joined the rail by just the rest of the crew. We were silent afraid to give voice to the fears that now consumed our hearts. Finally, after several minutes, we heard a lone voice in the darkness. It's the end of the world. Oh, not world drama queen. <laughs> Whose stuff is that? And he just left a bunch of alcohol. Thanks. That's what, Dorian, I got you a gift is more booze. <laughs> you said you wanted me to be more romantic and alcohol was the way to do it, so... I got it. I got a lot, actually. I wonder if I have a wine cellar. Dude, I need to go explore Skyhold and see if I have a wine cellar. I actually think there's like a secret room underneath one of the areas. I'll probably go look into that at some point. Like, I found a secret room. It's like, I didn't know it was here. This place is here, but it's hard for me to find things. I got lost in the prison. <laughs> I would love to own a castle. Or like keep like skyhold, but um, in all honesty, I would be in a constant state of getting lost. They'd probably never find me. You know, it'd be like, "Where's the Inquisitor?" and everyone would be like, "I don't know." And it'd be like, like a month before they finally found me, like walking around in the catacombs. Like, how did you get down here? It's like I don't know. I was just I was looking for the library, and I wound up downstairs. It's like, I know where the library is. I don't even know how I got here. From now, they'd have to put like a like a tracking device or like a beeper on me. Because I would just be like, well, she's gone again. It's like, yep. I bet you she got lost on top of the Skyhold this time. They would be right. I'd be up in like the tallest tower, unable to find my way down because I'm stupid. Do you guys like my weird musings? <laughs> I like my go, go. You have, you can, you have. Shut up. You have legs. Stop being such a bitch about it. I don't like that I hear just random growling around here. I'm pretty sure this forest is haunted. It's probably haunted, and they just haven't told me. You know, they're just like, just don't, don't tell the Inquisitor. It's like, why? It's like, because the forest is haunted, and just don't shut your mouth. Ugh, going uphill is the hardest thing to do. Oh, I thought there was someone leaning against that wagon all, like, casual, like, what up? It's like, oh, hello, who are you? Oh, you know, just, just a person. It's done. What are you talking about? <laughs> Cassandra, are you been, you been testing that wine that I've been randomly picking up? Look, bad guys. Maybe she was talking about these guys. Oh yeah, it's all ice powered now. I forgot about that. This staff is all is all icy. Icy and cold. Nothing important. I don't think I've been back to, um... I know I'm going in the opposite direction of where I should be. But the the camp where the bandits were, were they called Hessians or something? What is this? No, it's the falls. Where's that camp at? That. Hessarian. I need to make my way at some point. Because I'm curious. I'm just going to teleport to this location. Just because it's close. No, no, don't talk to me. Shut up. No, 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 no. Rudely run away. Mind your own business. Uh, that looks like a drop. You should probably take the pathway. I'm just saying. 
It might be smarter. I don't know. Do I look like a person with a brain? Nope. <laughs> I am a person who just jumps off of things. I mean, I jump out of the library you know, onto Solus's table at least eight times a day. I think he's getting used to it. I mean, honestly, I think I think he's getting, I think he's getting used to it. I'm I'm that person. It's like, why do you keep jumping off of stuff? Sane, haven't you figured that out yet? I'm a little bonkers. Hi guys, how you doing? Doing good, I hope. Sir, to you too. So that there's a primeval red lyrium doohickamajig in here, and I kind of want to touch it. It's, like, important that I touch it, I think. Because if I don't touch it, then it won't explode. And if it doesn't explode, then then Varric won't be happy. So I want to touch it and make it explode. I wonder where it is, though. Is it actually in here and I just kind of, like, bypassed it? Because I do that stuff sometimes. I'll just kind of walk past shit and not even notice. Or maybe it's in an area that I couldn't quite get to. You know what I mean? That happens sometimes too in this game where like you can't really get to a spot sometime later when you can uh, ask your fellow officers to deal with the problem. I know this is the way to the dragon place. I don't know what delirium deposit that meant. So I'm kind of like wondering it says it's right here it's up here in this mountain somewhere oh, it's back here red templar key what does that mean <laughs> new score what's that mean have you got scrambles boy i hope you have this is good and that's what that's from new high score what's that mean where, where would this magical, mystical key of death be? Okay, it's not a key of death, but shut up. You know what I mean? Everything's of death in this game, so you just gotta kind of deal with it. Did I miss, like, a dude who died and I just didn't pick up his stuff because I'm dumb? Oh, well, there's a dagger in there that I can sell. That's good to know. Let's see a key. You guys, Solus, what do your elf I see? I like to think that he would just get tired of that shit after a while. Like, you're an elf too, Inquisitor. I say, yeah, but I'm not Finn Haral, so. Answer my question. Nope. Oh. Okay. I just break that stuff. Calm down. Must have missed someone. An item that dropped or something. Which, I mean, honestly, not surprising. This is me we're talking about here. Again, not exactly the brightest, just bright enough to stay alive. Huh. That's empty. Oh, honey. Lovey, get out of the way. Thank you. Thank you, my sweet. Darling. Move the- Let's go on over here. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but I can't swim. Uh, like, in real life. Can't swim. So, um... I'm not a big fan of, like, deep and or fast-moving water. So, like, sometimes when I go over bridges and stuff in games, this one's not, I mean, I mean, honestly. It's it's funny, because I can't swim, but I like getting in the ocean. Yeah, see that? That's not okay. I like getting in the ocean, and I'll actually get up to the water, or get into the water up to my chin. Um, which is, like, where I'm comfortable at in deep water. It's up to my chin. Uh, but yeah, I can't swim. And, um, it kind of sucks, but at the same time, I'm just like, you know what? I'm fine with it. <laughs> I don't, and it's like, I could, I could probably learn, 
but I have this issue where I get in deep water and I start having all kinds of weird, like, thoughts about the deep water and how freaking scary it is and how I don't want to, um be in it and stuff like that. I always think that there's going to be something ginormous come up underneath me or um, suddenly the ground is going to give way underneath me or something like that or it's just like the, the never-ending darkness of being under the ocean. It freaks me the hell out. Uh, I've actually got like a, a book I'm writing. It's in progress. I haven't worked on it in a while because I've just been busy with other things and then I got sick and Sometimes it's hard to focus on writing when you don't feel good, so, you know, um, but the, the premise is, I think it's neat. I think it's a neat, like, sci-fi type, fantasy type thing, um, but the main character, sorry, this is important. I don't have any control over how I'll be remembered. Sword raised high, blue scarf dramatically fluttering in the wind, sun rising behind you. Blue scarf? Why would I be wearing such a... <laughs> it's a painting, of course. Work with me, it'll be fantastic. He's <laughs> so cute. Like, come on. Um, but yeah, the main character, um... He's afraid of deep water, and he's afraid of the dark. And those are two of my fears. I'm not as bad with the dark as I used to be. If you had known me years ago, you would have been like, Jesus. <laughs> um, I also don't like leaving my closet door open. I don't know if anyone else has that one. Oh, like, it's weird, because like, I'll leave the bedroom door open, where it's more likely someone who breaks in will come through that door. But I don't like having my closet door open, because if something comes out of the closet, you know for damn sure it doesn't belong there. So I, I won't leave it open. But um, anyway, the main character in the book is afraid of deep water, of the ocean in particular. Um, and he's also afraid of the dark. But I put him in this situation where he winds up willingly going into this... Into the ocean. Into his worst nightmare. Um, and having to experience it whether he likes it or not. And, um... Yeah. <laughs> it gets kind of like, uh-oh. Uh, some stuff happens, and he winds up being stranded underneath the ocean. But in a really neat way, where it takes on this, like, fantasy, sci-fi type, you know, stuff. And it has to do with who he is, um, with his, like, heritage and stuff like that. And I'm, like, really excited to flesh out the story more right now. It's just in, you know, the, the, the first draft, with the rough draft phase. Um, but I'm really excited to continue the story and stuff like that and keep going. I don't know how long it's gonna be. I'm not gonna try to make it, like, too long, because I know sometimes when stories like that get, like, um too drawn out or it's outlook it can be a bit annoying and frustrating because like you kind of not just for the person writing but also for the person reading because you can tell that they're starting to lose steam if they take too long uh with stuff if they kind of try to like draw it out I but i am so. doing some, you know world exploring and stuff in it right now uh what is it with the main character learning more about it like that so yeah, it's just, right now it's interesting. I'm fleshing out the world, I'm fleshing out my main characters. Um, there is going to be some, there is some romance, because I just can't help myself. Uh, anyone who's ever read anything that Ashley and I have written together will know that we just, we can't help ourselves. It's very rare that we'll have one that has absolutely no romance in it. I think so far we've only written like one that had no romance in it. So, it's just... I can't, I can't help myself. I love it. I love, I love making my characters fall in love. I just think it's adorable. Uh, you know, especially if there's some sort of, like, th like, they're unsure about themselves and about the person they're falling in love with, and sometimes, sometimes I'll even make it to where they're kind of, like, they're unsure about 
um, like their their preference, you know, and stuff like that. Which I think a lot of people, I mean, growing up, you aren't immediately sure, I think, until you reach a certain age uh, about what you prefer. So I, I like also kind of throwing that in there sometimes. I think it's interesting to have someone who isn't quite sure, but they're starting to like fall for this person and they're becoming more sure of it. You know, so for me, it's interesting. For you, you might be like, eh, I don't know. But for me, I find it interesting when I can kind of like give my, my characters this this feeling of not knowing. And it's just, it's, I, I just like it. It's, it's fun for me. Um, you know, and I also like talking to people who uh, have experienced certain, certain things or, you know, or they do have a certain um, sexual preference, sexual orientation, you know, stuff like that. Um, just to kind of get a feel for it, stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. Because, you know, I, want, I don't want them to be like, stereotype because you always have a stereotype in books where you're like this person is just the epitome of every stereotype I've ever seen which there's nothing wrong with being <laughs> a stereotype shut up Cassandra stop drinking um, there's nothing wrong with having stereotypes I think it doesn't bother me when I see stereotypes and stuff I just think sometimes I, I like to break away from the stereotypical character uh, with stuff and and I we, we've had our stereotypes and then we've also had things were kind of like they're very different and so unexpected and I love that I love writing with her and stuff I know I'm gushing over my waifu I can't help it um, I, I adore her I adore you Ashley um, so yeah I just like to break away from the stereotype sometimes and then sometimes I like to be like, the super stereotype and uh, I don't know it's just fun to mix it up but yeah, he's there is there is the 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 subplot of romance um, in the book I'm writing because I just have to have it. I have to have romance. I just can't help myself. I'm one of those people that always finds myself going back to that, and just because I I just like it so much. I don't know how you guys feel about romance. Maybe you're more into people just like all the time, which is also fine. But I'm not a fan of everyone just constantly being dead. <laughs> Anytime, like, a character... I don't like hurting my characters. Uh, when I write, I, I upset myself sometimes. I'm like, I'm so sorry. It's like when I play this game. I upset someone and I'm like, shit. <laughs> but sometimes like, I can't fix it in, in the game. Sometimes there's a character who's going to be pissed at me no matter what I do. I mean, that happened with uh, Cole. After the Winter Ball. I... My no matter what it was, he was, like, upset. I don't know if he was mad at me or if he was just mad at the situation. Which, it's understandable because the situation is kind of effed, you know? And I don't think there was any really good out in, in that scenario. I think it's just kind of something that, um, it's just the way it is. Of course, I got the ending that I wanted, and the reason I hadn't gotten it the first time is because I'm not very- Oh, God! Ow! I'm not very bright sometimes, so I just kind of, I just didn't get it. Uh, and I had to go back a couple times, and I realized that I just, the reason I hadn't, there's a bunch of mobbery. You know they're wearing jackets? Did you see that? They're wearing vests. Uh, I realized that I just made the mistake. Oh, it's because there's a guy out here. Oh yeah, I'm so scary. Oh, oh no! Sorry, I'm glad that Colin's not here. Um... No, oh, there's more people over there just fucking pacing around, mind their own business, and I'm just here destroying their lives. Anyway. Uh, yeah, there was no happy ending, I think. Like, no true, true happy ending to Winter Ball, but I thought it was important to bring Briella into the fold. Um, especially since we're really trying to get elves and people to freaking work together. They're always, like, Oh, we're elves and you're humans, or we're humans and you're elves, so we're separate. And that's that. And I'm like, no, we have to work together because if we don't, we're all gonna die. It's like, fucking grow up here and stop being bitches about it. <laughs> I get pissed at video game characters who are all about like, it's me. And I'm like, it's not just about you though. There are so many, there's so much at stake. And you're just like, let's be a dick about everything. And it's like, how about you don't? 
Could you maybe just put aside your bullshit for like five seconds so we can not all die a horrible, fiery, flaming death of destruction and doom? Oh, got it. Alright, where's the last one? Where are you, you son of a bitch? Uh, Morin's Outlook. Oh, okay. I know where that is. That's where that... That's where we find that stuff about the guy and the, there's like a table out there and stuff. Some dudes had like a... Whoa. Had like a fight. This is also where I first start out, where I first see the dragon fly overhead. In all of its epic glory. Alright, we need to go... Down the beach. Got it. I also love games like Dragon Age, where I get to make, like, a defining choice for my characters. Um, that doesn't only affect my character, but also affects things around me. Like, in this game, if you play as an utter piece of garbage, then you lose your friends. You lose the people who care about you the most, because they're unwilling to stick around and deal with it. Which, I mean, is an amazing thing to put in a game, I think, is the unwillingness for those who you have grown close to to deal with your bullshit. I think that that's an amazing thing to put in a game, that they have their own um, morals and stuff like that. Their own code of, like, honor and conduct. I, lo I love that. You know, it's like... It's, it's the same, you know, when I played Detroit <laughs> Become yeah, Human. See, now it's relevant for you to say that. <laughs> uh, playing Detroit Become Human, there are choices in that in that game that are world changing, you know. And they not only are they world changing, they kind of define who you are as like a a person almost. I mean, not really. You know what I mean? Um, it's a game about like what you believe is moralistically right and what is moralistically wrong. Like, where do you draw the line? And my friends are just gonna go on in there, aren't they? Well, have fun, I'm gonna go pick up the shard. Um, and I think that's so cool that you can choose to be, like, this complete bastard, or you can choose to be, uh, you know, a person who wants I things to change the the for the house. better. The dreams are never worth the effort. You should spend more time. The ocean's pretty kick-ass, even if I'm terrified of it. I mean, I like the idea of, of being able to choose what you want to be. Being able to choose, you know, something that's going to shape and change the world that you're in. I mean, because that's the kind of stuff that happens in real life. The choices you make are world-defining for you and for the people around you and stuff like that. And people will see you differently depending on what you do, you know. I, I've, I've seen it. And I've also had people, like, look at me and go, Ugh, you don't align with my whatever, so I guess we just can't be friends. Um, I feel like being different in, in friendships is also important. I, I don't think you should all be the same. You know, a lot of people are like, Oh, you don't align perfectly with my, my beliefs. Oh, well, you know, we can't hang out. And it's like, why not? It's like, we should all be able to be different. We can have a different opinion and still be friends. That's the beauty of being different. Is that you don't you don't have to be the same, and I, I love that. I love being able to be different than other people. And finding people who are different and that I jive with. I mean you can jive with someone who's not the same as you. That's the beauty of, of being a singular entity. Okay. That is I know. Uh, that's gonna be it for Dragon Age today. I jabbered quite a bit, didn't I? I'm sorry, and I kept yelling at Cassandra because she was all, all glitched out, and she's like, It's done! It's over with! I think we're finished! Could we have some tea? It's like, tea? We're in the middle of- Solus hates tea! Why are you even saying that? <laughs> but, uh, thank you guys for coming in and watching this episode. Thank you for listening to me ramble on. Thank you for watching me run around picking up shards so I can open, uh, completely open Solus on, because I want to see what's behind the big door. I've never opened it completely, uh, even though I've played this game like 20 times. I know, I'm I'm obsessed, help, I have a problem. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys a lot, just for everything, for subscribing, for watching, for, for the comments, for being helpful, for just being awesome. I love you guys, and, and you know, I love 
getting to talk to you when I get the chance to and stuff like that. So yeah, um, we finished Transistor. I think our next playthrough is going to be Mad Max because that seems to be the one that everyone's like, ooh, Mad Max. And I don't know how to put a thing up here on YouTube to be like, pick it, you know? So uh, yeah, it's probably going to be Mad Max. And I've only played a little bit of that game, so I'm looking forward to it. So yeah, I love you guys, and I will see you next time. All right? All right. Bye!